When finding the sum or difference of decimals, the main thing to keep in mind is that you have to line up these decimal points. By the way, when I do addition or subtraction, I do not write the operation sign. And whenever I have two signs in front of a number, I'll use the rules of multiplication to write that as one sign. With the first problem, the signs are the same. So we'll be adding. I usually put the larger number on top. And notice I'm careful to line up the decimal. I'm going to put in this zero here. Of course, it doesn't change the value of the top number. Carry the 1. Bring the decimal straight down. So here's our answer. Looking at the next one, again, the signs are the same. We will be adding. I'll put the larger number on top. Being careful to line up the decimal, the decimal is sitting right after the number. So I'll write it, and I fill in these spaces with zeros, even though since we're adding the signs are the same, it's really not going to matter. Decimal comes straight down, and there's our answer. On this problem, the signs are different, so we will be subtracting. You have to put the larger number on top. I'm careful to line up the decimals. I'll put the decimal in, and I can't subtract from air, so I have to put in the zeros at this point. The larger number is positive, my answer will be positive. Again, I don't put in the operation sign. So we have to borrow from way over here. Keep borrowing. Keep borrowing. And finally, decimal comes straight down. I should say it just it lines up. It doesn't physically come down. It just lines up. So here's our answer. Here the signs are different. We will subtract. You have to put the larger number on top. I'm careful to line up the decimals. So now I'll put in the decimal. You can't subtract from air. You have to put a zero here. And notice the larger number is negative, so the answer will be negative. Have to borrow. Decimals line up. So here's our answer. On this one, the signs are the same. We will be adding. I still like to put the larger number on top. And of course, we'll be keeping the sign. Line up the decimal. So here's our answer. Again, two signs in front of a number. I use the rules of multiplication. Negative times negative is positive. Bring down everything I haven't used. Now the signs are different. I'll subtract and keep the sign of the larger. Careful to line up the decimals. So I'll put in the decimal. And although I don't really have to, I'm still going to put in the zeros. So here's our answer. So we have three more to take care of. Two signs in front of a number. Positive times negative is negative. 
I'm just using the rules of multiplication here. I'll bring down whatever I haven't touched. Now the signs are different. We will subtract and we'll keep the sign of the larger. Careful to line up the decimals. And I'm subtracting. I can't subtract from air. So I have to put in the decimal as well as the zeros. And again, our answer will be negative. Have to borrow from all the way over here. So that's 10, but you have to borrow. You have to borrow. Keep borrowing. And we're finally there. So line up the decimals. 9 subtract 6. Bring down your 9 and that 4. So here's our answer. Again, two signs in front of a number. I use the rules of multiplication. Negative times positive is negative. Bring down whatever I haven't touched. The negative. Here the signs are the same. We'll be adding and the answer will be negative. Again, I like to put the larger number on top. Careful to line up the decimals. I'm going to put this zero in just as good practice. I know our answer is going to be negative. So there we go. Finally, our last one. Uh, all the signs are positive. We'll be adding. We have to just be careful to line up the decimals. And just for good measure, I'll put in the decimal and fill in the zeros. So this gives us a 5. Decimals are lined up. There's our answer. If you'd like some practice with these concepts, if you're at my website, you can download a worksheet along with a detailed answer key.